Now that all the mechanicals are checked out, let's have a look at the inside of the car. The first thing we're going to do is have a look all over the interior of the car at the overall condition. We're going to find out does it look trashed or does it look nice and clean. Then you're going to want to use your nose and smell what does the car smell like. Does it smell like the previous owner has been smoking? Or does it smell like the car has been in a flood? Because flood cars are really something you should avoid and there's an accident waiting to happen. Now we're going to jump inside, close the door, and turn the ignition on. Now what I'm going to be looking for is the odometer reading. I want to make sure that the condition of the car matches the odometer reading. We're going to look for signs of wear on the brake and gas pedals. If they're brand new or if they're worn through, that indicates the car is probably a high mileage car. We're also going to be looking for signs of wear on the driver's side seat. Look for signs for wear on the transmission shifter and also on the steering wheel. We're also going to be looking for stickers on the door jams and the windshield to indicate the odometer reading when the vehicle was last serviced. Now we're going to check out all of the accessories on the car. We're going to first start by jumping in the seat and make sure all of the adjustments work and you can get comfortable. We're also going to do the same thing on the passenger side. Make sure the power windows work on both sides, both up and down. If the window is slow to roll up, that could mean that the regulator is on its way out. Check that the power door locks work on both sides and also that the door handles are working properly. Check the window lock. We're also going to check that the power mirrors work on both sides of the car. Check that the steering wheel tilts properly. Have a close look at the airbags and make sure they have not been tampered with and that the cover is not warped or looks different than the dashboard. Otherwise it could mean that the airbag has been replaced and the vehicle was in a major accident. Have a close look at the door latches to make sure they haven't been tampered with or the vehicle has been broken into. Also have a look around the ignition key area for any marks or scratches indicating that this could have been a stolen vehicle at some point. We need to look for the telltale signs that the vehicle was in a flood. We're first going to start by lifting up all of the floor mats and feeling the carpet for any wetness. There's a thick carpet padding under here and if it gets wet it'll never dry and it'll cause rusting in the floor pan. We're also going to have a feel under the dash and the console for any wetness and look for a line. Sometimes you can see a line of sediment where the water line was in the car. Check the door pockets and make sure they're nice and clean and don't have any wetness or sediment. Have a look at the frame rails under the seat and make sure that they're not rusting. Look under the seat at the electrical connectors and make sure that they're all intact and they're not rusted out. Check that the parking brake moves nice and freely. Also have a look at the cup holders and make sure there's nothing in there. The traction control button and also the storage cubby. Pull up on the back seat and check underneath for any sediments or wetness that indicates that the car might have been in a flood. Check to make sure the trunk release and the gas door release works. Turn the ignition on and make sure that all of the lights are working and none of the bulbs have been disconnected. Then we're going to start the vehicle and make sure that all the warning lights go out. Make sure all of the gauges are working correctly and also that there's no evidence that the odometer has been tampered with. Check that the overdrive button and traction control button are working. Check that the horn works. Check the parking lights, headlights, fog lights, high beams and both indicators to make sure they're working. Check the tail lights and license plate lights and also the brake lights and the reverse lights at the back of the vehicle. Check that the gauges and all the dash lights light up properly when the lights are on. Check that the windshield wipers are working in both low and high speed. Make sure the cruise control is working. Check to make sure that the radio works on different channels and different modes. Also check to make sure that the CD player works. Now we're going to check out the HVAC system. We're going to first turn it on and check the blower motor to make sure that works. Check to make sure that the air is coming out of the right area and that the modes work. We're also going to want to make sure that the vents are moving and they're not broken or anything like that. Then we're going to check the front defroster and make sure that that works. Usually the air conditioner turns on with the defroster. And then we're going to check the rear defroster to make sure that works. Then we're going to check the air conditioner and make sure that's working and the air conditioner blows nice and cold. And then turn it all the way to the hot setting and make sure it blows nice and warm when the engine is warm. Make sure the clock is functional and that the hazard lights work. Shift through all of the gears and make sure the gears are shifting smoothly. Check the cigarette lighter to see if it's been used. And also check the ashtray to see if it's been smoked in. Check all the power connections and make sure they work and no fuses are blown. Check the glove box to make sure the lock works and that it opens and closes nice and smoothly. 
We're also going to check that the owner's manual is present. Check to make sure that the auto dimming mirror is working properly. The map light is working. Also the garage door opener. And more importantly, the sunroof. Make sure that the sunroof closes and seals nicely. Look at the sun visors and make sure the vanity light is working. Check to make sure the dome light works when you open the door. Check to make sure that all the seat belts work and that none of them are worn or frayed. And also that when you latch them in, the seat belt light on the dashboard comes off. Check to make sure that the front seat slides properly and that it's not jammed. Check that all the seat mechanism works for entrance to the rear seat. If the car includes floor mats, make sure they're there and all present. Jump in the back seat and make sure that the seat belts and any vanity lights and accessories work, including the power doors, windows, and locks. This is also a good time to take note of the build quality of the vehicle, with things such as the wood grain dash and the soft touch dash materials, and see how they're holding up. Now we're going to open the trunk. Have a look inside of the trunk and make sure everything is nice and clean and there's no evidence of sediment or a water line. I'm going to go in here and pull out the trunk liner. Make sure the jack tool and also the lug wrench is present. Make sure that the jack is present and is nice and secure. Also make sure the tailgate or deterrent system is topped off and it's working. Jumper cables and bungee cords are always good to have. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the spare tire. Pull out the spare tire. With the spare tire out of the way, we're just going to have a quick look at the spare tire weld. Make sure that there's no welds or anything that could have indicated a collision damage before. We're also going to look for things like rust and dirt and debris and evidence of any water that could have indicated the car was in a flood or that the seals are leaking. You can see if these drain ports look like they've been tampered with. That could tell you that there was water here at some point and they've been drained out. Have a look at the spare tire. Check the condition of the wheel and the tire. If it looks like it's been driven on. I could tell that somebody was too lazy to change the tire after having a flat. You're also going to want to check the dot board on the side here. To see the age, if the vehicle is old and the tire is original, that could indicate that this tire is expired just due to time. Also check the tire pressure and make sure that the rim and tire size match the ones on the car. If you see this oily residue down where the jack is, that's a good sign because it tells that the car has been rust proofed. Check to make sure that the trunk locks properly and if you've got a remote trunk popper that it works too.